Good evening, everyone. Ben here, and today I wanted to take a look at the Democratic primaries for 2020. Um, before I get into this, um, I want to explain the colors on the map. Uh, purple is for Biden, red is for Sanders, light blue is for Kamala Harris, smoky blue uh, is for uh, Amy Klobuchar. Uh, that's this color, and Harris's color is this color over here in the uh, states like California, Oregon, uh, Washington. Amy Klobuchar's here is right here. Uh, orange is for Elizabeth Warren, as you can see in Massachusetts. Uh, green is for Beto O'Rourke. And gray is for ties, anything where candidates, and I rated this based off of how many delegates they get per state. Um, and I actually spent a lot of time uh, over the past weekend-ish figuring out how exactly how many delegates there would be per state, um, figuring out the vote share between Sanders and Clinton in 2016, to get approximately the progressive versus norm uh, establishment slash moderate slash n normal liberal Democrat, not super hyper progressive. Um, there's also I also did boost the number uh, the uh, the share of progress what progressive candidates would get um, because the party has moved to the left a good amount as seen by which candidates are declaring. Um, that said, there are still a lot of moderates. Um, as you can see, Biden performed well pretty much in the South and any area that's just maybe not, not progressive, but just has isn't 100% say in that range, um, say for example in New York um, or Maryland or Delaware. Uh, Wisconsin was kind of a bit of a stretch, but I could see it working. Uh, uh, I could see that happening. Um, Kamala Harris looks like she didn't perform very well, but when you look at it, she took second in a lot of states, um, especially in the South and where there's high minority populations. I figured that would make sense. Um, anyway, I'm going to actually show you the spreadsheet I've worked on. And you'll see that I had a lot more candidates than um, <laughs> than I think most other people would. Uh, for example, we had Booker, uh, Julian, uh, Cory Booker, Julian Castro, John Delaney, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, uh, Bernie Sanders, his is blue here, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, I even put Bullock in there, um, Tim Ryan and O'Rourke. A few of these are speculative candidates, but I figured that wouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm actually going to zoom this in so you guys can see. Okay, and I've frozen the, uh, I've frozen the first column. So I figured out exactly how many total delegates there would be in each state in 2020. Um, for example, in 2016, there were 51 in Iowa, but that changed. Uh, and I would actually go through, and for each primary, I went with the percent, and then I calculated how many delegates each candidate would get um, proportionally. Um, because I think the Democrats have it where half the delegates are at large and then the rest are proportionally assigned um, based off of how much of the vote you got. So the just straight up winner gets half and then the rest. But I just did everyone proportionally. Um, California, for example, Kamala Harris won that one and took most of the delegates. Um, and you can see the breakdown. Um, and at the end of it, um, before we get into it, I left the delegate count the same, even if they drop, even if I, you know, have them suspending their campaign at some point, which is why there's so many zeros. Um, so the total delegates, there are four, 4,531 and you need two, 2,266 in order to win. Um, I Booker endorsed, and I combined and in, 
had theoretically had Democrats endorse, and this wound up pro providing on the first ballot 1,300 for Kamala Harris, 1,400 for Sanders and change, obviously, and 1,700 for Joe Biden. And then this is just to compare it. That way I could see if they actually pass the test. And then because it made the most sense for Kamala Harris's to for Kamala Harris to release her delegates um, to vote for someone else, I figured she'd try and convince them by endorsing Sanders. I just assumed everybody would go for it rather than uh, split between uh, Sanders and Joe Biden. So. In this scenario, even though he may not have had the most uh, delegates on the initial roll call, um, that would have been Joe Biden. He wins on the second roll call thanks to California. And this is actually something I noticed, is California moving their primary up would will significantly affect the race. As a matter of fact, it makes Kamala Harris actually a viable candidate because chances are she'd be hopelessly behind by the time California rolls around, and then she'd only be playing spoiler to the big names. Whereas now with um, California being on, um, California's primary being on Super Tuesday, she's going to be one of the front runners, uh, which is relatively interesting. Now, as for my personal prediction as to who the nominee is going to be, it's going to be Biden or Kamala Harris. I'm not sure how well Sanders is going to compete in this primary, considering the relative congestion of the progressive uh, section of the Democratic uh, Party when it comes to the candidates that have declared. Um, anyway, I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye.